welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Career Mode. In the last episode, we had Bob here on EVA from his landed ship. And he had managed to splash down not too hideously far away from this island. Let's get the map view up here. This island in the middle of this crater in the ocean. And what I had proposed to do was to have him swim from where he splashed down onto that island, plant a flag on there, have a look around, and see what things might possibly be in this location that I've never been to. And so, I proceeded to work on that. And eventually, I had to stop, shut down KSP, and uh, I figured to come back to this. However, having come back to it, the WASD directional controls don't do anything. Spacebar, shift, and control don't do anything. Nothing works except I can turn his light on and off. So I can't get him to do anything. I can't get him to continue the mission. And so I'm going to just have to go ahead and recover him whatever science he's carrying and then I'll have to go into the tracking station here and recover the ship that he came down in this one go ahead and recover yes recover it all right and now let's head off to the R&D facility to see if there was any science on Bob or the uh ship. I honestly don't remember. 241 science. Well, let's see. 300 for anything in this tier. 550 for anything in this tier. And the next thing out of this tier I want is the uh, negative gravioli detector. And from here, the seismic accelerometer. So... Let's see, what else do we have flying? Oh, yes, that's right. We have the Hoover ship, which is here. Let's go ahead and fly that. Okay, let's see what we can come up with. Well, one thing I found out is by a little bit of research, bring up the surface info, I edited this particular window and added two items current biome and the raw biome see right now I'm over the ice cap although I can tell that by looking and current biome that we're in is space just above Kerbin and I get the distinct impression we're not going to get anything new from that let's try an EVA I wonder why it flops the view around like that when you go EVA. Uh, space just upon Kerbin's ice caps. And they're not worth any science. So get back on board. And I think given this, and you know there's something else too. This ship had four of these capsules on it. And I know we sent the one with Bob in it down. At least I'm pretty sure it had four. Get that out of my way. Separated the one. But these are 90 degrees apart, so they must be... Yeah, there had to have been four. They're like 90 degrees apart. So, for whatever reason, we're not going to get any new science off of this. Uh, apparently, I was mistaken about the whole surface asteroid samples while over different biomes. Because that doesn't seem to make much difference. So, I'm going to go ahead and undock from this thing. And 
we'll just turn on our RCS and we'll back away from it. After we switch the view over to the ship instead of the asteroid. Gemini. There we go. We'll back away from it. We'll leave the asteroid in position. And we're going to send our astronauts home. And we're going to put together another science mission. One that does not involve asteroids. We may return to this, but for the moment, I don't feel a need to. So, next up, let's see, we need to undock or decouple one of these, switch to it, turn on SAS to stabilize, we'll just point it retrograde. Let's fix the staging here. There. That's more like it. Now we can uh, activate its engine, burn retrograde, and send this one down. I forgot to set free camera mode. All right. We'll set this down. And then we'll set the other one down. And then we'll take the main ship and send it down. And send a science mission out to the moon or Minmus. Because this is taking too long. The asteroid re recovery thing has been interesting, and there's a lot of potential for it in the future, and I will probably, almost certainly, revisit the idea. But, these things should have the couplers. I don't. But, uh, for the time being, I think I'm done with it. Instead, we're going to go a little bit more old-fashioned and just get stuff done get loads of science so that we can unlock the stuff needed for the big parts, the big stuff, the more extensive mission capabilities, and so on. There should have been a decoupler between the tank and capsule. Crew report is worthless. Parachute is already deployed. Uh-oh. Deploying a parachute at high Mach is not what I would consider a great idea. Okay. Bring this down, recover it, and then do the same with the next one and the main vehicle. And then we're going to get going on something that I hope will be more productive. All right, and recover. Switching screens and having that black screen thing is annoying. I really hope that someday they eliminate that black screen bit. I want the Hoover 1D. And now we will re-enter the other extra capsule. Now, maybe I was wrong. Maybe there was only three of these, but it certainly didn't seem like it. All right. The parachute up here. Do the same thing. Bring this thing down. Camera to free mode. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and accelerate this.
There's something about the way these are put together, the parachutes automatically deploy. All I can say is it's a good thing I don't have deadly re-entry enabled. As it is, when that parachute opens up, we're going to have a huge jeep thing. It better open up soon. Just about pegged the G-meter. Okay. Landing in a field of trees. Okay, we'll go ahead and recover this. I already have science for grasslands. And now the Hoover 1D itself. Camera on free mode. And Patney Kerman now comes down. Science Rock will remain in orbit. Coming down over the pole, and the camera does this incredibly annoying and somewhat disconcerting swivel around. And all of a sudden, I have tons of lag. What the heck is that coming from? Now, we'll hit separate. I need that will help. Okay, I don't know why, but I'm only getting three frames per second here, so I'm going to accelerate through this and catch up with you back at the Space Center after recovery. All right, I'm back. And as some of you may know, I pulled something of a seriously derpy thing when I recorded the first part of this. You see, I'd forgotten that I'd left OBS running when I got ready to start this, and so when I hit F12 to have Fraps start recording, OBS started broadcasting because it has F12 for the start-stop broadcasting key. And so I had an inadvertent stream going at the time this was being recorded. And uh, 
it was a stream that got interrupted by disconnections a lot because I, I kept hearing the disconnection sound from OBS and couldn't figure out what that noise was coming from. And then I finally realized that that thing was running. And, well, this is uh, a lesson. When you're finished live streaming, turn off OBS so that you don't do things like that. Although maybe someday when I get an internet connection that has really actually got a good upload rate, I may actually do something like that on purpose, you know, do a live stream of recording an episode. We'll see how that happens, uh, see if that can happen sometime. Meanwhile, I have the new vehicle completed, I'm calling it the regular one. We have the science bay on it, along with batteries and solar panels. I've thrown a keythane detector on there some lights and so on. Up here we've got our materials bay and let's see. Oh good grief, I forget whether that's RCS or goo. Okay, that's monoprop. And actually I think what I should do Two of them monoprop, because I notice there's no goo containers on there. And two of them goo containers. They're a similar shape. They're almost the same size. Okay, it's a little lopsided, but I'll deal with that. Okay, so this thing is all ready to go. And then, of course... I have to zoom way out to show the launch vehicle. And I'm zoomed all the way out. And this thing is monstrous. Yes. Using the new SLS uh, boosters. Uh, asparagus staged. In combination with a mainsail. For the first stage to get it launched. And I've got it all tricked out with lights and everything, so let's pick a crew for this monster. No, Jeb, you're not going. Okay, let's see. We've got Desford Kerman with no stupidity. And we've got Patney Kerman with no stupidity. We're going to put them in the, in the processing lab. And Durfrey Kerman can fly this thing. All right. Let us adjourn to the launch pad. There we are. Okay, go ahead and close that out. Okay, I would not be surprised if this thing had difficulties because of its incredible size. Let's see, let's turn the lights on. Well, that part's cool. Lights up like an oversized Christmas tree that looks like it's ready to tip over. All right. Get our Delta V and our Smart SAS, Smart ASS, whatever it's called. Get set up to launch. Being the first flight, this is, of course, a test. We'll see how it performs. And if all goes well... We'll uh, be launching more of these and sending them to various places to collect royal crap loads of science. All right, in the meantime, we're all set. Let's throttle up, set the camera to free mode, and let's go. It's practically jumping off the pad, so I'm going to throttle back, keep our acceleration down to 2 G's or so. All right, let's engage our attitude hold. I may have to take one of these stages out. I realize that this thing is way overpowered, but better overpowered than underpowered, I always say.
looks like we're doing okay. We're accelerating really fast, even with the throttle down. Let's turn it down some more. Okay, let's get ready for our next attitude change to 85 degrees. And let's go ahead and execute that now. Set up for 80 degrees. I figure when these uh, asparagus boosters separate, I'm going to have to go to full throttle. Approaching 200 meters per second and 5 kilometers. Yeah, I realize this is overkill in an extreme way, but that's all right. I mean, sometimes you just have to have overkill in Kerbal Space Program, especially if it works, and this appears to be working. All right, let's pitch 80 degrees. Get ready to go 75. Four seconds left on these boosters. Okay, throttling up, staging. All right, pitching 75. Did I set the camera to free mode? Apparently I had. Okay, we won't do that again. And let's pitch to 70. Get ready to pitch to 60. We're gaining altitude really fast. Okay, this is looking good. Call this the overkill launcher. But we'll see when it actually gets to orbit. And it does need to successfully do something right, because that space lab has got astronauts aboard, and it's not designed for a re-entry. It does not have parachutes or any other kind of recovery mechanism. Pitching down to 60. Kind of hard to hold things steady. I'm getting a lot of lag while in atmosphere these days. And I'm not sure exactly what the reason for that is, but... You just have to survive long enough to get out of the atmosphere and things smooth out considerably. And I'm sure dropping this lower stage will help. Okay, I should be pitched down to about 45 degrees by now. So let's execute that. All right. 
gimbal on that mainsail makes this pitching really quick. It's one of those situations where I think it's a good thing we've got some lag. Okay, ditching that stage. Launching the next one. I believe this one is the skipper. Yep. Let's pitch down to about 30 degrees. All right. I think we're doing pretty good here. I think this is indeed going to make orbit. And all of this part will get there with a full load of fuel for the looks of things. Certainly most of a full load. Hmm. Okay, looking at this, apoapsis is still going up, but time to apoapsis is dropping too fast. Let's pitch back to 40 degrees. I may have pitched over too far too soon. Time to have elapsed is still coming down really fast and really soon. This is not great. It means making orbit may be something of a challenge. It may be necessary to go ahead and take out one of these stages here or replace that skipper with a mainsail. Yeah, this skipper should have been a mainsail. As it is right now, I just want to keep the thing going up. It needs to make orbit. Note to self, in the future when testing things like that, don't put astronauts in the science module. Send it up empty. That way, if you have to ditch it into the ocean or onto the ground, you don't kill your pot, your uh, scientists. Well, we're still going up. But we're getting awfully close to apoapsis, 5.1 seconds away. And at that point, we will start going down. That is inevitable. Vertical speed indicator is already coming down. All right, we're past apoapsis. We are now descending. At an alarmingly faster and faster rate. Yet we're still going faster and faster. We're up to Mach 3.8 and accelerating.
Apple Apsis altitude is continuing to increase, even though we've passed it. We might be able to salvage this into an orbit. I hope so. Dropping the lower stage should lose uh, a fair amount of mass off the ship. It might let the rest of it make orbit. We'll find out. Because this is another skipper engine. And up here is just a poodle. Apoapsis appears to be dropping now. Yes, it is. All right. Staging. We still have some serious descent issues. Pitching up to 50 degrees now. Mach 4.8 and accelerating still. But we are still descending. And that descent will kill the mission. Wait a minute. Vertical speed is now going up. All right. We've pushed the apoapsis in front of us. Okay, now we've got some real hope we'll get to orbit. But this launcher definitely needs some work. And I think the first thing to do is to change that first skipper into a mainsail. All right. I think we'll wink orbit. Yeah. Let's go ahead and start pitching down to 40. Watch the time to apoapsis number. If it starts going down, I have to pitch back up a little bit. Okay, it's still going up. That's good. Mach 6.1 and accelerating still. Let's pitch to 30. Concentrate on getting orbital velocity. We're almost at orbital velocity, actually. Getting very close. All right, let's go to 10. We're getting very, very close. Apoap periapsis is coming up. Getting closer and closer to zero. Apoapsis is high enough for an orbit. Pitch right down to zero, right on the horizon now. We're out of the atmosphere, and all of a sudden our lag is gone. Cut. We have a 177 kilometer apoapsis. Let's head out there and do our circularization burn.
Okay, there we go. All right, we don't need the far module anymore. Let's go ahead and deploy solar panels. And time warp up for a nine second burn. This off, SAS on. All right, kill that and that. Okay, 177 by 176, not bad. All right, now, before continuing with this, I'm going to make some design changes, and we're going to launch another one of these. So, let's stop back at the Space Center, head over to the Astronaut Complex, and see if there's any non-stupid astronauts to hire, and add to our Real list of crew. Okay, this one. Hire him. Oh boy, look at this guy, Nellorf Kerman. He's a complete moron. This guy, he's studying to be a moron. Uh, okay, we'll just uh, have to come back and try again. All right, I'm going to work on some design things, and we'll be back for another launch. All right, here we are, once again, ready to go. This is the Regulate 2. I have changed out this engine from a skipper to a mainsail, and I think that should make a major difference. I've got a Regulate 3 built that removes one of these uh, orange tanks from the stack and keeps the uh, mainsail down here. But I'm going to try flying this one first. And given the way the last launch went, with incredible amounts of lag while in atmosphere, I'm going to go ahead and fly this one, catch up with you in orbit. So I'm going to go ahead and do the launch, and then we'll be cutting to orbit. Throttling up. And let's go. And we'll see you in orbit. All right, this thing is clearly not quite to orbit yet. Its periapsis is 43 kilometers, but its apoapsis is 2.7 thousand. And uh, this is because I just barely managed to avoid having this thing come crashing down low enough to bring the apoapsis all the way back down. I had to pitch way up towards the end in order to do it at all. It did manage it. And in this flight, I once again observed that while in atmosphere, the ship behaves as if it's under physics time acceleration. As soon as it leaves the atmosphere, it gets above 70 kilometers, Everything smooths out, and it's nice and easy to handle again. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. But, uh, all totaled, this ship was able to make it to orbit. Just, I'm going to have to get up somewhere around Apoapsis and do a burn to bring the periapsis out of the atmosphere. And 
See what I can do to figure out why the ship is behaving like it's in time warp while in the atmosphere. And that said, I think regular three with one of these orange tanks removed will fly better. We'll find out because I'm going to ride this thing to orbit, do a, uh, a burn to bring the periapsis up, and then I'm going to the launch pad to launch like the regular three. All right, here we are with the regular three. One stage removed. It's not quite such a towering leaning tower of pizza or leaning tower of rocket pizza or whatever you want to call it. And so maybe it will fly better. So we'll just throttle it up and go and find out. It's doing a little better, it seems. Let's go ahead and begin to execute our pitch control. Doesn't seem to be acting like it's under time warp. Now, before, the way it was going is like the mainsail thrust. That flame was stretched way out the way it is when you're like in 4x time acceleration. And things were really sluggish and difficult to handle. This seems to be functioning better. And so I'm going to go ahead and ride this one to orbit. Check in when I get there. Seem, am I seeing mock effect around the sides of the vehicle, or is that just some kind of... No, that's mock effect around the vehicle. Okay. Doesn't seem to be causing a problem, so we'll just leave it go. And I'll see you in orbit. Alright, we're approaching the edge of the atmosphere, and note the engine exhaust as we cross that boundary. You see, it was behaving like it was under time acceleration. Not as bad as before, but it was still acting that way. All right, cut engines. Let's have a look outside. Yes, we're on the approach to a really high apoapsis. Let's Set our circularization burn for up there. That looks good. Assume the position. Deploy the solars. I'm going to go ahead and burn the last of the fuel in this stage now, because there's almost none there. Cut throttle, stage that away. And now do a test burn with this one. Well, that's a main sail, so I'll still do a test burn. Okay, burn at T-minus 30 seconds, and that should do it. Turn this off. SAS on. Burn. So far, of the three vehicles, this one has had the easiest time getting to orbit. And I dare say it might have done so with the most fuel remaining. And I think the next thing on the order of 
things to do is going to be to get all of these vehicles refueled and send them off somewhere to various places for science. All right. 154 by 133. Not super great, but it's better than the orbits of its other ones. Certainly better than that one. That's going to be a bear to rendezvous with. And we'll work on that as soon as I get a refueling ship designed. <laughs> 